Pasito tum tum, pasito tum tum, pasito tum tum, pasito tum Hey guys, welcome to the other side of modern things. Purple! What's up with this purple I see everyone then? Seriously, it's like every time someone would get angry, their faces would be inflated with purple. Now that I realize I need a wardrobe change for this review, from the director that brought you Whiplash, it's... Purple Land! Wait, I mean La La Land! It's the one time of the year that a film gets the Oscar buzz. Last year was The Revenant, now it is... Deadpool! Can you blame them? Since last year, La La Land has enchanted its viewers with its romantic tale of passions and dreams, along with its breathtaking visuals, demonstrating the most colorful places of Los Angeles. And by colorful, I mean... PURPLE! So much hype it's gotten with its total of 14 Oscar nominations that has now robbed people the wrong way as to arguing whether it's not as good as many think it is. Now, let's set this on the table. It is a good movie. The musical songs were memorable, but just okay at best. Some of the scenes had strong storytelling, and the characters are charming. But I don't know if I can say it's a great movie, since it wants to be in the same league as Singing in the Rain and other musicals that has been compared to. Hey, you wanna know something? Come here. I have seen Singing in the Rain. This is not Singing in the Rain. The story is very simple to follow. It starts off with a struggling actress, played by Emma Stone, and a piano jazz player who dreams to open up his own jazz club, played by Ryan Gosling. They first meet, and they can't stand one another, but they quickly fall in love and share the unique passions of jazz and classic movies through dancing and singing. Now, I don't want to be biased that I must like this film for the hype and how pretty it looks and how it's going to win several awards, but I also want to be fair with it rather than take the cynical way out as many are approaching it. And from what I've seen, why it has rubbed people the wrong way is for being another homaging ball slicker to Hollywood. Once again, it's a love letter to films, a common thing we're starting to notice a lot and get pretty sick of. I mean, I was in a thrill when they made those movie references such as Casablanca or Rebel Without a Cause. And there is debate whether most of the scenes were repeated knockoffs from other musicals such as Singing in the Rain or Melody Broadway. But I wouldn't go too far on saying that it's plagiarizing other scenes, maybe just barring them a little bit, sort of, kind of, maybe. Okay, Melody's a ripoff, I'll give you that. But to the film's credit, in an interview the director said that he's been wanting to do this film since he was in college. If that's what he wanted, props for him that it paid off. However, here's where people take sides on what this movie represents. They either see the good intentions he had on making a homage to classic musicals and was recognized for it, or they see through it as another corporate show business Oscar bait story that promotes how great their own industry is, that creates art and because of that, he'll be rewarded for it. It can be a case since recently there has been several films like this coming up, but for what it's trying to do, it seems to benefit both itself and the movies of the past. Now people might get interested to check out those old musicals the director got inspired from, in that way they can have a better understanding of what La La Land is, and I see it having its own identity that sets it apart. It's about achieving your goals and passions in life, but also the fear and sacrifice you must go through in order to achieve them. Ryan Gunsling's character is afraid he might end up playing music that he doesn't like, and through time, the old school jazz he loves so much be left forgotten by the modern generation. Emma Stone's character is afraid that she won't become an actress after several failed auditions, despite how passionate and devoted she has been since she was a kid. She immediately grows on you as a sympathetic character for how hard she puts on her work, only to be disregarded or humiliated, that you immediately can relate to her fears and insecurities. There are some common elements that it has with Singing in the Rain, such as both arguing and disagreeing with each other's professions. While in Singing in the Rain they start off as viewing each other beneath the other because one is a movie actor and the other is a theater actress, here they just see each other's missed opportunity they take with their careers. Ryan's character asking why doesn't she make her own stories if she loves movies and stories that much? As for Emma's character, jazz pretty much sucks 
And that's where it kicks in. Each of them tries to educate one another on why they love what they do, and they start to fall in love because they see the commitment and passion to what they love. Which anyone could admire and relate to someone that has a passion for anything particular. As much as the story is simple, it has some of the most beautiful scenes that I've seen in a while. It's well aware that it's a musical, and it takes full advantage on what it can do to make the story seem like a big theater play. Their choreographies, on the other hand, are not at the same league as Singing in the Rain. The dances in La La Land are toned down and are at best basic. As for their singing voice... This could never be You're not the type for me uh, And there's not a spot Well, uh, 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 Hey, he knows how to play the piano! But here's where I can give it a pass for it. If you look at the Hollywood actors between the 30s, 40s, and 50s, musicals were the style that ruled their big movies. They were professionals at dancing and singing. But since musicals have been dead for a while, today's new style are special effects and action. Most of today's actors grew up watching these classic musicals, but were not required to learn their style. That's why the dances were intentionally simplified. So in that way, the characters might seem more relatable as opposed to someone who does these backflips and these complicated moves that the common man wouldn't be able to do. Each of the movies concludes in a different tone from the other. One ends in a happy note. This one, without spoiling it, ends joyfully depressing. By the way, the ending of this has one of the best visuals of storytelling. And finally, I got to ask... PURPLE! What's up with this purple that sticks out like a thumbnail? Why is this world covered up in purple? Seriously! It's like somebody took the time and effort to kill Grimace, paint the set with his remainings, and tell the actresses to film about dreams and happiness. No sing, monkeys! Hashtags Purple Lives Matter. Take it for what it is. Is it in the top 10 best musicals? I don't know if I can make that judgment. But whatever take you have on it, it's gonna go down as memorable of the decade. This picture alone has become memorable to identify it. If you don't like musicals, this might not change your view on them. It's a feel-good movie that some will use as an escapism from the modern problems of the world, which <laughs> not recommendable. Despite that, I really enjoyed La La Land. And I gotta be honest, I'm a sucker for how this music sounds. Well, I wasn't as crazy for the songs, I was more into for the music that had no singing voice. Still, some of the songs were emotional and decent to hear. Besides, anything with color and nice looking visuals, I'm a sucker for it. The characters have chemistry, it's ambitious with its long shots, and it's filled with so much... PURPLE! I give it a 7.5 out of 10 stars. So, what do you thought on the movie? Did you like it? Did you not like it? I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. You can leave your comments down below, like, subscribe, and what would be some movies you'd like me to review later? Well guys, tune in next time for more reviews to come. So for now, that's it for today. <gasps> Ciao.